Welcome to our Regulation Mastery Session. In this session, we will continue reading the CSSF Circular 22806 from Part 1 Outsourcing Arrangements, Chapter 4. Governance of Outsourcing Arrangements. Subsection 4.3.2.3 Access, Information, and Audit Rights. 88. In-scope entities shall ensure within the written outsourcing agreement that the internal audit function, the statutory auditor, and the competent authority have a guaranteed access to the information relating to the outsourced functions using a risk-based approach in order to enable them to issue a well-founded opinion on the adequacy of the outsourcing. This access implies that they may also verify the relevant data kept by the service provider and in the cases provided for in the applicable national law, have the power to perform on-site inspections of the service provider. The aforementioned opinion may, where appropriate, be based on the reports of the service provider's external auditor. The written outsourcing agreement shall also provide that the internal control functions have access to any documentation relating to the outsourced functions at any time and without difficulty to maintain these functions continued ability to exercise their controls. 89. Regardless of the criticality or importance of the outsourced function, the written outsourcing agreement shall refer to the information gathering and investigatory powers of competent authorities under Articles 49, 53 and 59 LFS, and Articles 31, 38 and 58 to 5 LPS, and where applicable, resolution authorities under Article 61 1. BRD law with regard to service providers located in a member state and shall also ensure those rights with regard to service providers located in third countries. 90. With regard to the outsourcing of critical or important functions, in-scope entities shall ensure within the written outsourcing agreement that the service provider grants them, their statutory auditor and their competent authority including, where applicable, their resolution authority, and any other person appointed by them or the competent authority or resolution authority, the following. a. Full access to all relevant business premises, e.g. head offices and operation centers, including the full range of relevant devices, systems, networks, information, and data used for providing the outsourced function, including related financial information, personnel and the service provider's external auditors, access and information rights and b. Unrestricted rights of inspection and auditing related to the outsourcing arrangement, audit rights, including the possibility for the competent authority to communicate any observations made in this context to the in-scope entities to enable them to monitor the outsourcing arrangement and to ensure compliance with the applicable regulatory and contractual requirements. 91. For the outsourcing of functions that are not critical or important, in-scope entities shall ensure the access and audit rights, as set out in point 90 and subsection 4.3.2.3, on a risk-based approach considering the nature of the outsourced function and the related operational and reputational risks, its scalability, the potential impact on the continuous performance of its activities and the contractual period. In-scope entities shall take into account that functions may become critical or important over time. 92. In-scope entities shall ensure that the outsourcing agreement or any other contractual arrangement does not impede or limit the effective exercise of the access and audit rights by them, their statutory auditors, competent authorities, or third parties appointed by them to exercise these rights. 93. In-scope entities shall exercise their access and audit rights, determine the audit frequency and areas to be audited on a risk-based approach, and adhere to relevant, 
commonly accepted, national and international audit standards. 94. Without prejudice to their final responsibility regarding outsourcing arrangements, in scope entities may use. A. Pooled audits organized jointly with other clients of the same service provider, and performed by them and these clients, or by a third party appointed by them, to use audit resources more efficiently, and to decrease the organizational burden on both the clients and the service provider. B. Third party certifications and third party or internal audit reports made available by the service provider. 95. For the outsourcing of critical or important functions, in scope entities shall assess whether third party certifications and reports as referred to in point 94 B are adequate and sufficient to comply with their regulatory obligations and shall not rely solely on these reports over time. 96. In scope entities shall make use of the method referred to in point 94 B only if they a are satisfied with the audit plan for the outsourced function b ensure that the scope of the certification or audit report covers the systems i.e processes applications infrastructure data centers etc and key controls identified by the in-scope entity and the compliance with relevant regulatory requirements c thoroughly assess the content of the certifications or audit reports on an ongoing basis and verify that the reports or certifications are not obsolete. d. Ensure that key systems and controls are covered in future versions of the certification or audit report. e. Are satisfied with the aptitude of the certifying or auditing party, e.g., with regard to rotation of the certifying or auditing company, qualifications, expertise, re-performance or verification of the evidence in the underlying audit file. F. Are satisfied that the certifications are issued and the audits are performed against widely recognized relevant professional standards and include a test of the operational effectiveness of the key controls in place. G. Have the contractual right to request the expansion of the scope of the certifications or audit reports to other relevant systems and controls. The number and frequency of such requests for scope modification shall be reasonable and legitimate from a risk management perspective and H. Retain the contractual right to perform individual audits at their discretion with regard to the outsourcing of critical or important functions. 97. In scope entities shall, where relevant, ensure that they are able to carry out security penetration testing to assess the effectiveness of implemented cyber and internal ICT security measures and processes. 98. Before a planned on-site visit, in-scope entities, auditors, or third parties acting on behalf of the in-scope entity, or of the competent authority shall provide reasonable notice to the service provider, unless this is not possible due to an emergency or crisis situation, or would lead to a situation where the audit would no longer be effective. 99. When performing audits in multi-client environments, Care shall be taken to ensure that risks to another client's environment, e.g. impact on service levels, availability of data, confidentiality aspects, are avoided or mitigated. 100. Where the outsourcing arrangement carries a high level of technical complexity, for instance in the case of cloud outsourcing, the in-scope entity shall verify that whoever is performing the audit, whether it is its internal auditors, the pool of auditors, or external auditors acting on its behalf, has appropriate and relevant skills and knowledge to perform relevant audits and or assessments effectively. The same applies to any staff of the in-scope entity reviewing third-party certifications or audits carried out by service providers.